Merry Christmas, Parkway. worship with us.
you to go ahead and be seated and we'll say a word of welcome to those joining us uh, through Facebook as well. Brother Matt has been under God's leadership taking us through a wonderful relook at the fact of uh, about light, light in general, but then Jesus Christ as our light. And I wanted to mention uh, just something that touched my heart these last couple of days from Luke 2, but a little different part of the chapter where Mary and Joseph encounter Simeon. Do you remember Simeon? And Simeon says, Oh Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace because my eyes have seen your salvation. And he describes Jesus as the glory of Israel. But then don't miss this last phrase. And a light of salvation unto the Gentiles. That's right. That's where, aren't you grateful that though we weren't originally, at least most of us in this room, I think, originally the chosen race of Jewish people that we have been brought in through Jesus Christ, the light of our salvation. And so it's so good to be back with you today. I think I've heard most of the jokes, but you may have a couple of creative ones. The walls have been trembling. I need to reapply for membership. My favorite was, I don't know if I should give credit or not. I'm looking right at him. Hey, Bobby, did you have to plug the address into your GPS to find us today? So thank you so much for your prayers for my family. We're all uh, doing well, and I just am very grateful. It's great, great, great to be back with you. Let's continue worshiping our light, Jesus. You guys will stand back up with us as we just continue to worship Jesus this morning.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him, and apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, and yet the world did not recognize him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of natural descent, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yours is the king. 
so beautiful. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, your name is so beautiful. And we just come bowing before you this morning. And that's really the only response that we have. As we just bow ourselves in worship and praise your amazing and powerful name. We love you so much. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can take a seat. celebrate Christmas. Oh, all month long. Big dinner with lots of presents. 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 Go to church. I go into church and be with my friends and family. We read the story from Luke. Cut down a Christmas tree and decorate it. And we like to be with family and eat lots of good food. Lots of food. Mashed potatoes. Turkey. Homemade tamales. Brisket. We still like the, the gifts and stuff like that for the children. We open presents on Christmas Day and then the next day we leave to go to Grandma's house. With family and friends and a Christmas Eve service the church. The perfect gift. The best gift. Anything that involves Star Wars. Just good health and fun times. See the tickets to the New York Yankees. Anything from the heart. My kids. Kids for Christmas. Having kids or getting to see them? No, just getting to be with them. I don't need no more. I want you to get a Game Boy. Concert tickets. Money. Money. Lots of money. A Barbie. A four-wheeler. A boat. A new truck. A brand new Mercedes. Some new motorcycle accessory. World peace. Just for the family to be together and everybody be happy. My mom and dad getting back together. When I had to get out of jail and quit drinking. So why do we celebrate Christmas? Well, probably it's about the day Jesus was born. That you get to celebrate with your family and see everybody. Merry Christmas, Jesus' mother. It's actually Christ's birthday is what it is. The three kings came out to the stables to see him. Uh, actually, I was born and raised Jehovah's Witness, so I never got to celebrate Christmas. I think it's the time to really look at what you've gotten over the year and what you can give for the next year. And it is an age-old tradition, so we like to uphold that tradition. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Try it again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yesterday I was shopping and I didn't get a happy holidays. The cashier said Merry Christmas and about fell out. I said, you deserve a tip. And I don't think I'm allowed to do that, but I got a Merry Christmas in a regular store from a cashier. And I thought that made my day. I went out smiling saying that was awesome. Christmas means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. If we surveyed this room, they would say, you would probably say it's about family, it's about friends, it's about, some of you might say food, probably some of you would, but most of all, a lot of us would say it's about the giving and receiving of presents. Because other than our birthday, whatever holiday do we give presents for? It's a natural response of how we celebrate Christmas, is that we give presents. And if you listen to the hype on TV, they've got to be good presents. I mean, you got to get something really, really good. If you really care for somebody, you're going to get them something really good. Have you seen that commercial where the, where the guy comes home and with, a, with a Christmas present and said, look, honey, I bought not one, but two brand new GMC trucks. Did you see that? 
That's the translation of, guess what, honey? We're now $100,000 in debt. Merry Christmas. Isn't that great? And her response is, I love it. I tell you what, if I came home with $100,000 worth of debt, what I heard at my house would not be, I love it. That's so great. You know, this lady, she just said, I'll take the black one. You can have the red one. And they had a Merry Christmas because apparently the more you give, the happier you'll be. Apparently to the world, if you get good enough presents, it'll make your day. It'll make your week. It'll make your whole year if you get a good enough present, right? We think that we got to get more and get more and give more and give more for people to be happy as if material things will make us extremely happy, as if some kind of gift under the tree is going to just make your whole world better. There are some guys on the Internet who are going around to stores right now and they're walking up to people saying, you, you have one minute to put anything you want into your basket. And at the end of that one minute, whatever is in your cart, I'm going to pay for up to $1 million. One minute to change your life. Does it work? Does it change their life? I don't know. Let's look and see. Carl, start the timer. You guys have 60 seconds. Whatever you put in this cart, I will pay for up to $1 million. Starting out. Like, go, go, it's been go. six seconds. <laughs> oh, that's a big TV for a car. What's one more TV? It's almost been a minute. It's almost been a minute. Almost been a minute. Oh, and it has been officially a minute on the dot. No extra time. You did good, little man. I told these guys I'd pay for whatever they put in this cart. Let's see the damage. You grabbed so many gift cards, and these are $10 to $500. Look how many he grabbed. $13,000 in gift cards. Play back him grabbing these in slow-mo and put play of the day. Oh boy. They managed to spend $18,000 in under a minute, which is below a million dollars. So congratulations, you guys yeah. get to keep all this stuff. Woo! We are now in Walmart. This time, I'm gonna give the next person a little more time. This is Jordan. You told me you're a school teacher? I am. Okay, how many students do you have? On my roster, about 91. Jordan, we wanted to do something special for your students. Here's a shopping cart. Okay. Anything you put in this shopping cart, we will pay for for your students. I'm gonna start this timer here. Anything that's in this cart in five minutes, I'll pay for. All right, timer started. For the students, okay. for the students. Just for, just Let's just grab TVs for your students. Okay, almost some gamer heads. Yes. Okay, there we go. There we go. I got a vacuum cleaner because children are messy. Yes. So they need that. All right. They could definitely use headphones. Projector. Hello. Oh, this. Two. I mean, one. Let's throw more lamps. Oh, yes. oh. <laughs> Did she just grab a, a giant rack of light bulbs? The time is up, but this isn't her only cart. She also had the cart full of supplies from Chris, her other cart that she filled up, and Carl said he was filling up a cart. I think we did good work. Let's I go check great. out. What did you get? Listen, kids love snacks. You know who else loves snacks? Who? Me. Oh, no. They're going to be elated. They're going to be in shock, for yeah. sure. In these carts is over $10,000 worth of stuff for her students. And we didn't want to leave Jordan empty-handed, so we have a surprise for her. Sean, bring it on in. This is Sean, our bodyguard, because we're in the middle of Walmart. Thank you for the briefcase and making sure I don't die. Jordan, congratulations. Here is $10,000 no, in No, 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 yeah. no. You're going to make me cry. I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Oh, my God. Thank Go. you so much. Thank you so much. We have so many bills that need to be paid, and Christmas is coming up. My son's birthday is Friday, and we oh, weren't really? going to be able to get him things that he wanted. My husband's birthday is the 21st. He was just willing not to get anything because things are so behind, and so I'm just so grateful. I'm just really glad the money and all that just went to someone who actually needed it. That makes me really happy, and uh, yeah, we're going to head to the next store. Thank you so much. No problem. So did it work? One minute to go shopping, anything you want, up to a million dollars. She wound up with $10,000 at the end of her shopping spree for her kids in her classroom, and then another gift of $10,000. Did it change her life forever? That one minute, that five minutes of time, did it really change their life? With all the bills that she had and the birthdays and the Christmases to buy, that $10,000 can be gone pretty quick. 
She may look back on that a few years from now and say that was great, but it wouldn't have changed her life forever. No matter what the gift is, no matter how great it is, whether it's parked in your parking lot, in the driveway, under the tree, that is not going to change your life forever. Today we're going to talk about a gift that was given to you And when that gift was given, in that moment of time, when that gift entered the world, it changed your world forever. When God sent his son into the world, and he sent him into the world that was a darkness, but he didn't just send it into the whole world, he sent it for you and for me. And when Jesus entered that world, it changed not only the world, it changed you. It changed me. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 2. We're going to look at one of the, probably one of the most famous stories in history. It's the story that people have, that they've done children's plays about it. Kids dressed up. They got in the, you know, in the headdress and the robe. That We sing songs about it. Every store you go into has pictures of the nativity scene. Right now in your neighborhood, there's yards that are full of it. It's this story about the baby who comes in a manger and how this gift of God changes Everything. If you have your Bible, take it to Luke chapter 2. And in the honor of reading God's Word, the most famous story, the description of the gift of His Son. Would you stand together as we read this, starting with verse 8? It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and they had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. Thank you. You may be seated. Over the past few weeks, we've been looking at the Christmas stories through the lens of light. And our first week we talked about how the world, the entire universe was formless and it was void. It was in complete chaos. And I picked up a flashlight and I turned it on and I said, God sent his light into the universe to split the darkness, to bring order to the chaos. And then we said on the next week that man chose darkness rather than light. And because we choose darkness other than light, God sent light into the world, our world. And he sent it in the form of a baby, and he announced it with a star in the sky. And that star in the sky was there for everybody to see. Far as you go from the east and the west and the north and the south, everybody could see that star announcing that the gift, the light is coming to the world for everyone. And I took a lantern, and I held it up for everybody to see and say, light has come for everyone. Today I'm not using a lantern, and today I'm not using a flashlight. Today I'm using, as, as this source of light for our story today, a candle. A candle that represents the light that has come into the world. You see, a candle is a different kind of light. It's, it's small. It's, it's intimate. It's personal. If I have a candle in a dark room, it may not help you that much. You can't see it from over there, but it's just enough for me. If Heather and I are going to have a nice dinner together, if I want it to be a romantic dinner, I'm not going to have all the lights on and it's not going to be bright. It's going to be a candlelight. It's going to be a moment that, for her and I to share a personal moment together so that she understands that my focus is on her because all I can see is just her and all the, the rest of the room just goes dark and it just fades away and I am just locked in on her. It's a personal moment. It's an intimate moment. It's a connection between me and her. You see, when God sent his light into the world, it wasn't for everybody else. It wasn't for everybody. It was for you, an intimate connection between God and you. 
And as we look at the candles today, and you look at the candles as you, as you drive around you know, your neighborhood and you see lights on the houses and you see lights on the trees, I want it to remind you that it is a personal gift to you. That's what Christmas is. That it's that connection that God is between you and him and nobody else. That Christmas is for you. It's God trying to send a message to you. I want to notice you three things that come out of this story. The first thing I want you to notice is the glory of God. It said that the glory shone around the shepherds. The glory of the Lord appeared. Most of the time, when you think about the glory of God, it's, it's God's redeeming work. It's his blessing. It's his work of salvation. That's the glory of God. But in this story, it seems to have a physical presence, that God's glory showed up, and it was a light that shone that word adjective, it's shown around them. God's presence, the mere presence of God was shining a light into the world, and it said they were afraid. And in my mind, I can just imagine some shepherds out in the field by themselves. It's quiet. They got a little campfire, and there's several of them, so they're just sitting around talking. And they're looking up at the stars, and everything is dark and quiet. The sheep, the sheep kind of they kind of take care of themselves at night. They don't wander very far from the shepherds. And there they are in that moment. Then all of a sudden, an angel appears to them. And it's almost like the veil of heaven has been pulled back and the glory of God can be seen. And that heavenly host of angels is behind them singing praises to his name. And the angel begins to speak to them. Here's a picture of what one famous painting looks like, trying to depict this moment. You see that moment with the light shining down, and you can see that heavenly realm of other people where they could, the shepherds didn't know what they were looking at, but they were terrified, they were afraid because, because heaven has been opened up and they can see the light of God. Because where God is, is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. And I can just imagine that heaven is like this place that because of his presence, it just radiates with God's goodness and his love and the light of his presence was shining down on the shepherds. John 1 1 John 1 14 says, We have seen his glory. And they describe the glory as full of grace and truth. I wonder who these shepherds were that were there that day. Why were they special? Why did the light appear to them and not to somebody else? Why that field? Why those sheep? When though Bethlehem was a pretty big town and there were people everywhere, why did the angel choose there to declare the birth of God's son? I was reading some articles a few weeks ago. It was really interesting because there are some Jewish rabbis who've been teaching about this for centuries. And one of the teachings that these Jewish rabbis say is they say that these are not just ordinary sheep. Because where they were in Bethlehem, those fields were, they were special fields. They were marked for special sheep. These sheep in this flock, they were used for temple worship. They were sacrificial sheep. They were marked, this group right here, they're going to be used in the temple. And the shedding of their blood will, be, will bring forgiveness of sin to all the people. And so the, these rabbis are teaching that, that if that's true, then, then, the, then God chose that moment in time to appear to those sheep and to those shepherds to say, you know what, we don't need them anymore. We don't need that sacrifice anymore because the Lamb of God has come into the world to save the people once and for all, for all their sins. Isn't that neat? That the Lamb of God, who's going to be the sacrifice for all mankind, he's come into the world. We don't need that anymore. It kind of reminds me that this Christmas season that I don't need anything else but him. I don't need anybody. I don't need a gift. I don't need, I don't need fancy things. I don't, I don't need anything. There's nothing in my life that I need more than him, and he is enough. And that he comes into the world to say, this is all that you need. I am here to supply all that you need. The glory of God shown around them. The second thing I want you to notice about the story, and it's something that I've missed for years in this story, is that the light, the gift, 
It's for you. It's not for us. It's not we. It's not our. It's singular. It came into the world. He came into the world for you. Look at verse 11 again. Verse 11. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. The gift is personal. It's a gift just from God to you. A special gift, an intimate connection that he gave to you on that Christmas day. As you sit and sing the songs, I hope that you're singing about about Jesus came for you and you alone. And that Jesus came into the world for you to be the sacrificial lamb. That's what Christmas really means. We like to make it about a lot of other things like gifts and others. But it's really about you and how much God loves you and how much he wants a connection with you. And he wants to tell you how much he loves you and he showed you that through the gift that he gave. But you know what? He didn't just give us some gift. He gave us his very best gift. If I'm going to buy Heather a gift for Christmas, I want it to be special. I don't want it to just be ordinary. You know, our our refrigerator went out two weeks ago. I mean, it went completely out. It didn't just start running bad. It stopped running. The compressor went out. And so we decided, let's go shopping. Let's go shopping for refrigerators. And I learned two things about refrigerators since the last 14 years that we bought one. The first one is they're much more expensive than they used to be. Oh, my goodness. They're all fancy. You can can get Wi-Fi. You can play video games on it. It can take your temperature and your pulse. I mean, they'll do anything. And we didn't get any of those. But we were like, my goodness, they are a lot more expensive. And the second thing we learned is it takes forever to get a refrigerator right now. There's a backlog. We picked one out, and we said, how about this one? The guy said, oh, excellent choice. You can get it in February. It's like, February? I mean, we're living out of a cooler. I mean, we can't wait till February. How about this one? Oh, excellent choice. That will be March. March. I can't wait till March. And so we compromised, and we finally said, what can you get? in any decent amount of time. And he said, well, this one right here, it's a little different than what you just asked for. You know, the inside is configured differently. You can have it next Thursday. Sold. Let's wrap it up right now. Hurry before somebody else buys this thing, right? We couldn't give him the credit card fast enough. Will you please write? He wanted to talk and show us. I don't want to see pictures. Just somebody else on the other side of town is going to buy this thing and it's going to be gone. So we wrapped it up and they decided they were going to deliver it. And then when Heather and I were talking about Christmas present, Heather says, you know what? Let's just let the refrigerator be my Christmas present. And I was like, no, we can't do that. She's like, no, I'm fine with that. And she really is fine with that. But I'm not fine with that because she deserves a great present. I want to give her something for me. I want to give her some earrings or some slippers or a nice sweater or something that shows that I care enough to think about her. Okay, maybe not slippers. Maybe not slippers, but... (laughs) I heard that. I heard that. Maybe not slippers. All right, Maddie, we got to take back the slippers. No, I'm kidding. No, we don't have slippers. But, you know, I'm going to find something that's because she's going to go, oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for thinking of me. I want to give her the very best, not just something. You know, when God was going to give us a gift, he gave us the very best. He didn't, he didn't say Abraham come into the world to die for our sins. He didn't say Elijah, although that would have been great. I mean, Elijah, he's pretty big time. He didn't say John the Baptist paid the penalty for our sin. He sent his one and only son to come into the world to die for our sins. That's how special we are. He didn't give us a gift. He gave us the gift, his most precious possession. Jesus, who was there at the beginning of the world, He was there at creation. He had been with God all through history. And now God sent him in the form of a helpless baby, dependent on man to take care of him, to raise him and to feed him, the same man that will one day betray him, and the same man that he'll live his life and die for. God sent us the very, very best that we have. Because that's what God does. He gives the very best. I'm wondering if, if, you, if you were thinking about the best Christmas present you've ever had, I wonder what that would be. I remember two that stick out in my mind. And the first one is when I was a, a teenager, I really liked water skiing. And so once, one Christmas day, 
I got a, a slalom, O'Brien slalom water ski, and I was just like blown away. I had no idea that my parents were even thinking about that. I, it, was, it was expensive, it was extravagant, and it was awesome. And I used that thing all the time. And I remember that going, wow, I didn't expect that at all. What a surprise. And the second gift was when I was a little kid. My brother and I, we had been unwrapping all the presents under the tree, and we got down to that last present, and it was small. I mean, how good could that be, right? It's the smallest one. We saved it for last. We're like, I don't know, it's, it's going to be socks or something. I don't know, a keychain, thanks, Grandma, or something, you know. And we opened it up, and there was a piece of paper inside, and the piece of paper said, not all presents can fit under the tree. Go down in the basement, which is also our garage. And I looked at my brother, and he looked at me, and we dropped everything, and we went tearing through the house, ripped down the stairs, went around the washer and dryer, and boom, right there in the middle of the garage was a brand new go-kart. A go-kart? Are you kidding me? For two boys? Are you kidding? Myers, you guys take note, right? Go-karts. Go get you one, Danny. Yeah, I got a thought. All right? They're awesome. I mean, who wouldn't want, what boys wouldn't want a go-kart? It looked brand new. I found out later that my dad bought it used. He rebuilt the engine. He spray-painted it brand new. It looked awesome. And we were so excited. And we said, can we ride it? Because, you know, you, you get the gift, you got to use it, right? If you're getting a PS5 or something, you got to play it right then. You can't just wait till lunchtime. you got to play it now. Right, so we looked out, can we ride it? And my mom said, it's snowing outside. And we said, so? I don't care. Can we ride it? And my dad's like, it's fine. We didn't even change clothes. We're in pajamas, and we got a robe on, and that's it. And we're out in the snow riding this go-kart, having the time of our life. We built, we built a, a trail that went through the woods. I mean, we were out there all day long. We were out there until we could not grip the steering wheel anymore. Our fingers wouldn't bend, and we would come back in, we'd warm back up, and go right back out there again. And we rode that thing all day long, freezing, but it was the best gift ever. It was a surprise. We were excited, and it changed us in a way. We were so excited to get it. Listen, but the best gift that you've ever been given wasn't under a tree. It wasn't in the driveway. It was not in the basement. It was not in a box or a bag. It was not any of those things. The best gift you've ever received is that God gave his one and only son for you and nobody else, but for you. Do you know if you were the only person on earth that Jesus would have come anyway? If it was just you on this earth, Jesus would have come into this world. He would have lived his life. He would have died on a cross to save you and you alone. That's how much God loves you. That's how much he wants a connection with you. It's not about all of that. It is that intimate connection that light has come into your life and into your heart for you because loves, God loves you that much. The third thing I want you to see in this story is the names of Jesus. In this story, it calls him Christ the Lord. In Matthew 1, the angel declared that his name will be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And then two verses later in verse 23, they're quoting the Old Testament that says that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. That's the whole Christmas story wrapped up right there. That we needed a Savior. And so God sent somebody, his son, his very presence to be with us. He's God with you this Christmas season. I don't know about you, but there are days that I get a little, a little frustrated. There are days when I feel a little down. I feel a little depressed. I feel a little isolated. I feel alone. And it helps me to remember that he is Emmanuel, God with me. That's what your Christmas season needs to be about. God is with you. When times are hard, he is Emmanuel, God with you. When things are difficult when you don't think you can go on, when you think there's no hope, he is hope because he is God with you. When you feel like there's no future, he has a future for you because he is God with you. He's not just out there somewhere. He's not just around you. He is with you personally, giving the gift of forgiveness, giving the gift of love, 
that personal, intimate connection with God. Are you there yet this Christmas season? Have you gotten past the presence finally? Have you gotten past the, the busyness? Can you just stop for just a moment and realize that He is God and He loved you so much that He sent His one and only Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. God sent Jesus into the world to change your life. He did, didn't he? That day when you asked Jesus into your heart, that day when you, when you, when you said, God, I'm sorry, please forgive me, and you gave him your life, maybe you walked an aisle, maybe you got baptized, that day, didn't it change you forever? You felt different, you thought different, you acted different, and your eternity is now different because of the gift that he gave for you. God looked into your heart and into my heart, and he saw darkness. And that was not his plan for us at all. And so God said, let there be light. And there was light. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? And I'm just wondering if you would, are you really there yet? in the Christmas spirit? Are you really, really celebrating Him? Or are you just celebrating the holiday? There's a big difference. And I'm wondering if maybe in this moment, if you would just say, you know what? I am refocusing myself to Him. I am refocusing myself to the gift that God gave, not to the world, but to me so that I could have a hope in a future, so that I could be forgiven, so that I could celebrate and have joy in my heart in the midst of difficulty and trial and isolation and depression. I can be set free and be delivered. The candle that's burning is, is for you. God wants that intimate connection with you. He wants to, he wants to shower you with his love and he wants to remind you that he's already given you his very best when he sent his son into the world to set us free. Are you celebrating him today? Are you singing the songs for him today? God, in the quietness of this moment, we recognize your gift. We sing praises to your gift that light has come into our lives and changed us forever. Father, in these next few moments, I pray that you would refocus our heart, recenter our mind on the true meaning of Christmas. God, that we will sing your praises, not just in this room, but all week long. As we remember and we worship you in gratitude. God, I pray that there's someone here in this room that that they have not ever opened their hearts and life to you. That is not God with us because you, you can't be with them because they continue to push you away. I pray that today would be the day that they would stop pushing and they would surrender their heart to you. They would ask for forgiveness for going their own direction. They would open their heart to you and ask for you to come into their heart and their life and they would make you the boss. What a great way to celebrate Christmas to surrender to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Father God, we love you. Thank you for your Son. And we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This time of invitation is a time of praise. It's a time of worship for you to celebrate that on that night... That quiet, silent night, God's glory shone around the, the shepherds, declaring that everything has changed, that the Lamb of God has come. As you lift up your voice and sing, you feel free to worship Him however you want. You can come kneel. You can sit on the front row. You can stand where you are. You can sit in your seat. If you want to talk to somebody and have somebody pray with you, there'll be staff down front that would love a chance to pray with you. If you need to make a decision and join this church, we would love for you to have an opportunity to do that. However God speaks to your heart today, don't miss this opportunity to respond. Let's stand together and let's worship Him.
the light has come.
Just go ahead and stay, uh, remain standing with me. I'll try to be brief on these, but great, great news from First Service today. Um, a profession of faith, uh, Jackson Fryer has given his heart to Christ and come for baptism. And his sister, who had made that decision previously, is coming forth uh, for to be baptized now in the future. And so we celebrate with them. I know you join us in that as well. Um, as we continue to look at the light and many sources of light, Brother Matt mentioned one uh, not long ago, the convergence of Jupiter and Saturn, which is going to happen. And just a reminder, that's actually tomorrow. So you know, we want to take uh, a look for that and watching uh, to get a look at that. It'll be beautiful, I'm sure. And then also would mention related to light, candlelight service this Thursday. No services on Wednesday here, no activities, no Facebook Live, but Thursday, uh, Christmas Eve, we'll be right here at 5 o'clock. Now, a word about that, and we'll try to have word out about it on Thursday as well, but for that service, we're going to reserve the track for those who wish to wear masks the entire time, and so that, that area will be reserved on this Thursday for that special service when we come together. Uh, there are several other announcements, most of them you have there, folks online, you have a link to that as well, but I would also mention to you that as we continue to receive the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, we're grateful for the monies that have come in to help our missionaries around the world in spreading the gospel, but our goal is 55000 You continue to pray as I am as well, and let's give as the Lord leads us to do so, of course. Stop by the post office and pick up your cards, please. I know that that'll be a nice Christmas treat for you, and then quickly, we do need to mention uh, two Parkway families that are in need of prayer. Wayne Vick passed away this week. And you'll be praying for his wife, Marsha. I know we do not have any, there are no known arrangements to us at this time. We'll get those out as soon as we have them. And then Chris Birch, and some of you will know her because she is a longtime Parkway member, but a lady who has been uh, homebound has also passed away. That service is going to be Wednesday at Woodlawn at 2 o'clock with some visitation just before. So thank you for praying for those families and for reaching out in the ways that the Lord gives you. It's great to be here together. Let's worship now again through lifting our voices. So go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the Christ is Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Have a great week and a Merry Christmas.